Hello and welcome, Bill Judge with Monkworks, the manufacturer of the MZ30. At 2.6 pounds and four inches off the vacuum pad, this is the most compact and lightest weight electrical power source for experimental aircraft. And it's got a bunch of additional features in addition to that. I've been selling them for more than three years. I've got hundreds of them out there. Been featured in Kit Planes Magazine back in 2022, Sport Aviation just now in January 2025 seven years of product development here and there's a bunch of reasons why my customers love this device uh, top of the list is that it's completely self-exciting so you spin the device you get electrical power out there isn't any need for a field current phantom current whatever you want to call it that a traditional alternator needs this device will run as long as you're spinning it uh, i've got people using it as primary power there's a few people that are on the air show circuit that are depending upon this device to get them to the next air show and to get them through all their air shows and they're using it as primary power. They like it because it's super lightweight, which is very desirable in aerobatic aircraft. I got guys that are doing backcountry type work. The Legend Cub this year for, as the Alaska Airmen's Raffle Cub is running one of these and the Alaska Airmen's Dashini Cub from last year. Alaska Airmen's Association Raffle Cub was also running this device. This device, like I mentioned, has lots of additional features that are desirable top of the list is that it's aware of what's going on around it. So it's aware of the voltage of the bus it's attached to. It's aware of how much current it's putting out. So when it's attached with an existing electrical system and you've got an alternator that's running the bus and it's maintaining 14.4 volts or 14.6 volts, this device will sit back and will be completely passive. When the bus voltage slips below 13.7 volts, this device will step in and start trying to put out power. And it'll let you know that's happening through a status indicator that you can attach to an EFIS or to an LED and put on your panel. And at that point, it's gonna try and bring the voltage when it's set for in 14.3 volts in uh, my recommended backup configuration. It'll try and maintain that 14.3 volts. If there's more demand for current than it can put out, then it's gonna flash the status LED on and off once a second, letting you know, I'm trying, but I'm not succeeding. You may want to load shed if you're expecting your bus voltage to come back up to regulation. And then if for whatever reason you're able to get your main alternator back online, if you're just doing a test, you push the field breaker back in, main alternator kicks in, voltage rises back up over top of 14.3 volts. The current on this will drift off and go to zero, and it's aware of that. Once the current goes to zero, it's going to step back into standby state again, LED, indicator status is going to go off and it's going to wait for 13.7 volts again before it kicks in and provides power again. So I call that compelling need at 13.7 volts. It's got electronic current limiting. So hundreds of thousands of times a second, it's checking to see how much current it's putting out. And if the current limit's being exceeded, it will continue to lower the voltage on the output until the current limit is respected. This is electronic current limiting. It kicks in faster than the output fuse, which is a fast blow 30 amp fuse. It kicks in faster than that fuse can blow. So I've got a short circuit demo in another video where I short it out over and over again with the wrench and the fuse doesn't blow because the electronic current limiting kicks in so quickly. This is desirable for lithium batteries. A lot of people are running a 40 amp alternator or a 60 amp alternator and they notice when they start up, their lithium battery gobbles up way more than the alternator is rated for sometimes periods of 10, 15 minutes. In that period of time, that alternator heats up to the point where the copper conduction loss has become enough that it can't put out that much current anymore. And that's how a, a alternator current limits. This is bad for a handful of reasons. It's bad for the alternator. It's also potentially bad for your battery because you might exceed the charging rate for that lithium battery. It's also bad because you got to put larger wire on that alternator to plan for that additional current. It's bad for a bunch of reasons. The hard stop current limit on this device won't go over 30 amps. It might take longer to charge your battery up, but this device is perfectly fine with running at 100% duty cycle. You can run this thing at 30 amps all day long. Below 1800 or 1800 RPM, you're going to get 15 amps. Above that, you get 30 amps. And like I said, you can run it at its full rated load all the time. And the lithium battery is not gonna overload this thing and it's not gonna overheat and have issues. There are lots of reasons why people like this. It's a very complete kit, so a couple hours of your time, I'll give you all the accessories you need, crimps, 
and the switch for the enable that you put on the panel, turn it on and off. And there's a very complete installation manual that's on the website as well. There's a bench demo video that's uh, worthwhile watching. I've given some talks at Oshkosh and turned those into videos that are, are worthwhile watching as well. There's an installation operation video that's a good jump start on the installation manual. I have a reliable electrical system for experimental aircraft video. That's an Oshkosh talk as well. And forthcoming is project management for experimental aircraft. I'll get that video out shortly. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about how the device works, how you could reintegrate your airplane, please uh, feel free to reach out and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.